Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. As I do apologize, I know I told some of you on yesterday that I was going to come with a video with some things that actually came up, but I'm here tonight. I said I'm here to fuck a night, and what I want you to do for me is get your notepads and your pens out. Actually, you're doing this for yourself. Get your notepads and your pens out, because I got some homework for you to fuck a night. We jumps right into it. Some of us, we look at this Bible. And we take these scriptures literally. You know how we do it. We take it literally. Some folks have accepted these scriptures in the Bible as doctrine. I'm going somewhere with this to fuck a night. What does the word doctrine mean? Somebody tell me what the word doctrine means. Well, I'm going to tell you. The word doctrine means a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, a political party, or other groups. That's what this word means. So what does that mean, so so madam? Break this down for me. You go to church and you hear the pastors preach this Bible according to how they believe. Okay? And these beliefs was placed down from a political party or a group. Catch that. Overstand that was passed down from a political party or a group to these pastors of these churches today. Your Bible tell you it's a mystery. Your Bible tell you it's a mystery to know about the kingdom of God. It also tells you that guess what? It's a mystery to even know about Christ. Ain't that what your Bible tell you? It go to scriptures right here. What does the word mystery mean? You know how we do it. You have to learn how to look into these words to understand what's really going on. I said, what's the, what do the word mystery mean? Mystery. Something difficult or impossible to understand or explain. So what does that mean? If the kingdom of God and to know about Christ is a mystery, then that's telling me I got to seek out the truth until I figure out the mystery. That's what it's telling me. Come on, let's do this. Now I want to make this very clear. It's some pastors that really take these scriptures literally. And they teach you to take these scriptures literally as well. These type of pastors, they don't know the mysteries of these scriptures. So they're telling you what they think. And what everybody else say about these scriptures. What they've been taught to talk about about these scriptures. They was taught this shit in Bible school. And they teaching you this bullshitter. And it's also some pastors like T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar. Who know the true mystery of these fucker scriptures. But guess what they do? They get paid big money to tell you this watered down version. To tell you this watered down version of these fucking scriptures. Because if you knew the truth. They wouldn't be making no more big offering money. They wouldn't be making no more big money. I got to stay on topic. Check it out. Come on, let's go higher. When Jesus taught the people who followed him, he taught them in parables. That's right. I said he taught them in parables. Jesus said, fucker that. To the ones who just follow me, I'm going to tell them the fucker parable. But Jesus said, but to my real niggas, the ones who hang with me, the ones who really with me, he said, I'm going to tell them the mystery of that parable so they can what? Be able to save themselves. You have to really catch that. Now, what is a parable? Somebody tell me, what is a parable? A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral are a spiritual lesson, a moral or a spiritual lesson. So what does that mean? 
if we know Jesus talked in parables, we know that these scriptures of the Bible is just made up stories with a moral or a spiritual meaning. So that means you got to know how to read these fucker scriptures. Come on and let's tumble down a rabbit hole. I said, come on and let's tumble down this rabbit hole to fuck a night. Look at 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. Because I'm about to break this shit down. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. It says, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament? Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Go read that by yourself for yourself so it can sink in. It says, for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So, so madam, what does that mean? What it mean is, it says that the letter kills. What word do you get when you see the word letter? What word do you get from that word letter? Unscramble it. You get the word literally. When you take these scriptures literally, it will destroy you. But if you overstand the spiritual meaning of this scriptures, that's when you only, that's when you have life. So we need to stop reading these scriptures literally and find out the esoteric meaning of these scriptures. That's what we need to do. That's what I'm trying to teach you the fuck a night. And when you find out the esoteric meaning of that scripture, then you will see the true mystery. The true mystery is really inside of yourself. Huh, I don't want to lose you because I'm going somewhere. Now, don't you want to know the true meaning of these scriptures? I don't know about you, but I want to hear the true meaning of these scriptures. Don't give me that watered down bullshit. Don't give me that shit uh, that can't save me or give me life. Look at the scripture again. It say, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. So, so madam is not here to give you the watered down meaning of these scriptures. I'm here to give you the spiritual meaning of these fucker scriptures. And I'm giving you the shit so you can save yourself. We need to stop running to everybody else to save us. And we got to learn how to save our fucker self. As I told you before, most of these Bible scriptures are taken from ancient stories. They're taken from ancient stories. And then they're placed in the Bible. And you believe, oh, this is the word of God. Huh. They just change shit around. I said they just change the story around a little bit. Now I want you to take some notes. Because I'm going to give you some homework. Like I said, I'm going to give you some homework tonight. If you ain't writing nothing down, I want you to write this down right now. Everybody who went to church. I said everybody who went to church. And even if you didn't go to church, you know about the Adam and the Eve story. Everybody done heard about the Adam and the Eve story. Well, I'm coming to tell you, it wasn't no Adam and Eve. It wasn't no fucker Adam and Eve. Get that out of your head. The Adam and Eve story, guess what? It was taken from the Inky and Ninhar Sag story. That's where it was taken from. These lying scribes. These lying ass writers, they changed the story around and then they placed it in the Bible. And this is what we get today. Before folks try to argue me down, before you try to argue with me and tell me I'm just giving some bullshit. Well, guess what? Go do the research and stop being a lazy fucker. But we don't want to research. We don't want to research. I want you to ask yourself this question. What came first? What came first? The Inky and the Ninher Sag story came before this lying ass Adam and Eve story. The Inky and, the, and, the, and Ninher Sag story was already here. When you look at the Adam and the Eve story, you see the same similarities in the Inky and the Ninher Sag story. The same similarities. After I give you these notes and you go do the research for yourself, I'm going to put the story in the link. Okay? I'm going to put this story in the link. But if you can't overstand this story and what I bring to you, guess what? You're not ready to be woke. And I'm not going to force you to wake up. Because I'm not here to do that. 
I'm going to ask you this. What was the garden in the Bible? What was the garden called in the Bible? Tell me that. What was the garden called in the Bible? It was called the Garden of Eden. When you read the Inky and the Nin Her Sag story, the garden is called the Garden of Paradise. Huh, same thing. Just changed it around a little bit. They told us that Eve gave the fruit to Adam. She said, here go, here go the fruit, Adam. Eat this fucking fruit. And he ate the fruit. Now I want you to go read the Inky and the, the Nin Her Sag story. Inky ate the fruit all right. I said, he ate that fruit all right. Go read the story. In this story, Inky eats the tree. Inky eat the tree, plants from the garden of paradise. The same thing. They just changed it the fucker around. They told us that Eve was created from the rib of Adam. That's why we got these men walking around today thinking they the head of some shit. Sit the fucker down. Because that's some made-up bullshitter. I said that's some made-up bullshitter. And I love the men. I love the women. But I'm telling you, like the fucker, it is. They done told us that Eve was created from the rib of Adam. But in this inky and in her sag story, it don't go down like that. It say something different. When in her sag asked inky, inky was, was, was hurting. His health was going bad. So then her sag asked Inky. She said, which part of your body is hurting? And guess what he said? He named eight parts of his body that was hurting. And one of those eight parts of his body that was hurting was his ribs. Was his fucker ribs. That's where these lying ass scribes came up with this Adam and Eve story. And told us that Eve was created from Adam's rib. Now what I want you to do. Because I'm going to end it right here. I want you to go do your homework tonight. Go do, your, go do the research. Y'all know me. I come correct. Go do your research. And what you're going to see is the same similarities popping the fuck up. It's going to show you that some motherfucker body lied to you.